emergency room. Possible changes to the Clark County rules for group homes may loosen restrictions on where halfway houses can be located. It's a difficult situation for the county. How to help recovering addicts while addressing concerns of people who live in the neighborhood. Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Edward Lawrence shows us how one halfway house application sparked the debate. An unassuming home in a quiet Las Vegas neighborhood near Twain and Torrey Pines is salvation, according to Kurt Turner. He rents the house to six recovering drug addicts who volunteer to follow strict rules designed to keep them clean. Turner says he's had such a response to his efforts that he wants to make the home an official halfway house for drug addicts. I'm a drug addict myself. Um, I was homeless in Las Vegas for the better part of five, six years, and um, I just not know the way out. For 14 years, Turner relied on crack cocaine. The past seven, he's been sober. Clark County Planning Manager Chuck Philcipher says it's difficult to balance the need, the law, and the community. They had an application uh, that was denied on reconsideration. They still they maintained the denial, but uh, clarified that it was denied without prejudice, so a subsequent application could be submitted. So Turner says he wants to come back to the government center and refile for a zoning variance. He says he should not have to move locations. They actually violated my federal rights um, to help other people that have a handicap such as addiction. A closer look at the Federal Fair Housing Act raised questions about the county rules. Planners scheduled changes to the ordinance but tabled it for 60 days. In that time, a consultant will help write a balance between the law and neighborhood concerns. Well, many of them uh, are concerned about property values. Others are concerned to the impacts to their quality of life. Still Changes may allow the halfway house to officially open, saving lives, according to Turner. Um, we have to go somewhere. Edward Lawrence, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Turner's house is about 3,000 square feet. It has five bedrooms and a pool. Ted Florendo continues to be in for Kevin Janison, and I understand this break is over. Yeah, it looks like uh, we did get a short-lived dry spell, but tomorrow we got the chance of more storms in our forecast. Maybe not here in the valley, but maybe up in the mountains, too. Uh, here's a look right now at our Gibson US 95 weather station, 96 degrees. Winds remaining light, about 7. Notice the humidity. Check that out. 9% humidity now after 30 to 40% humidity these past couple of weeks. East Charleston now 99 degrees with winds about 4. Humidity 11%. MLK to North Las Vegas we go. 99 degrees right now. No wind being reported. Speaking of winds, they are light so far with exception to the edges of town, specifically in the south to southwest part of the valley. That's where we're getting that dry flow now. Light winds for Overton, Lake Mead, and Boulder City picking up a little, including Red Rock. Prump, you're about 7 mile per hour as far as the winds go. As far as the highs, the temperatures were in the upper 90s to even 100. 100 out in Windmill. The Zoo, 99, and uh, West Gallon to the northwest, 96 degrees. Outside of town, 97 for the Sandy Valley. Prump, 93. Mount Charleston came in at 71 for our high today. Top temperature at McCarran got to uh, about 99 degrees. 102 is our normal, so we are still still below our average 74 degrees was our overnight low on Sunday. This was very busy on the Doppler radar. Now just a few echoes mainly around Mojave County and that is it. Some more showers also to the north of uh, Nevada here, but we continue to see that dry southwesterly flow. The problem is we have another low off the coast of California. You throw in this high here and that will tap into some more moisture. So tomorrow we have the chance of some thunderstorms in the upper elevations. We should be dry in the lower elevations, but on Sunday or Saturday, I should say, this could tap into some stronger moisture. So we have a chance of thunderstorms again for us here in the valley on Saturday. Tonight, 77 degrees, calm and clear. We're looking for a light wind tonight. Tomorrow, high of 99 degrees, partly cloudy at times and mostly sunny in the morning. Again, the chance of thunderstorms lingers on in the mountains, 74 degrees with thunderstorms possible with a mixture of sun and clouds. Winds anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's your seven-day outlook now. The chance of thorns again, storms again on Saturday and then Sunday, we should be partly cloudy. Back to more sunshine and drier weather finally with uh, temperatures around 101 to 100 degrees by Tuesday. That's your neighborhood weather here on Channel 8. Dave, take it away. Thank you, Chad. Terrell Owens is back at Eagles camp, but is he back for good? Former Cheyenne star Tory Coleman is making the transition from high school to college football, and it is a painful one. And here's something you don't see every day, or ever for that matter, sumo wrestling at Mandalay Beach. Sports is next here on Channel 8.
Eagle star Terrell Owens is back in training camp after a brief morning meeting with head coach Andy Reid. Reid asked Owens if he wanted to stay on the team, and T.O. said yes. T.O. and I did get together this morning, and uh, I'm obviously not going to go into details. Uh, um, I'll keep that, again, between T.O. and myself. The only time we really get caught up in this mess is when we turn on the TVs and see it and some idiot with a plane was flying around our whole practice saying T.O. must go. You know, those are distractions. It's not actually T.O., but it's the stuff that the people are trying to respond and all the negativity around it. After practice, Owens had the audacity to ask the media to respect his privacy. The NFL is back on Channel 8 Friday night. Vikings and Jets. CBS coverage begins at 5 o'clock. Last fall, Torrey Coleman enjoyed an all-access pass through just about any defense that offered resistance. The former Cheyenne High School star is finding life to be a whole lot different at UNLV. The 6'2", 210-pound tailback is taking his first hits of his college career. Yeah, man. Um, today I got introduced to college football. It was, it was this what I expected, man. I mean, these guys come 100 miles per hour. They don't hold back, man. And I mean, in high school, you know, guys kind of see me get intimidated. They hold back a little, but these guys coming straight downhill. How do you see your role on this team this year? Uh, I see me, I see me, I see me contributing like, uh, about 50 percent. Um, the guy Eric Jackson, he's a good back. And point blank, he's a good back. And you know, I'm just learning from him this year. And I mean, next year I'm gonna have a whole year to get my body ready. And the next year I'll be, I'll be ready to step it all the way up. Tonight at 11, we'll get Mike Sanford's forecast for Coleman as he settles into UNLV. The world's top sumo wrestlers will converge on Las Vegas for the Grand Sumo Tournament this October at Mandalay Bay. Earlier today, a pair of competitors put on a sumo demonstration at Mandalay Beach, and it's something to see and not something we recommend at home. This three-day event's also becoming a very hot ticket in the Far East. What we're seeing actually tremendous interest. Initially, we were told that we could expect as many as 2,000 coming over from Japan itself. We're hearing that the interest has been so great that they're already looking for more tickets. Our Japanese wholesalers and other Asian wholesalers uh, are really jumping on this because it's, it, it, it's unique. It's in the United States. They already like to travel the United States, but when they can come and see their national sport here in Las Vegas, pretty powerful combination. I'm pumped up for it. And I asked some of the guys, you know, talk to them. And they're, like, very excited to come over. Takes a lot to get that guy pumped up. It's been 20 years since the Grand Sumo Tournament was held in the United States. And I was over there today. It's a very interesting experience. Yes. Yeah. A nice costume. No matter what they look like, those guys are athletes. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Dave.